NSI was founded in 2012 with the aim of normalizing the activity of strategic restructuring and creating sustained collaboration models that support more efficient, effective, and sustainable nonprofit organizations. With the support of 19 LA-based foundations since its inception, the Nonprofit Sustainability Initiative has supported about 250 organizations through 100 partnerships. The grants are provided in two ways. One is to support negotiation, to hire a skilled facilitator to help with the negotiation process. And the second round of grants is to support integration or the implementation of those collaborations. STEM prep schools really came about in large part because of NSI. We looked to grow and when we wanted to, NSI came along and helped fund some of the consulting and some of the integration we needed to go from one high school to now serving uh, 1,500 students across three schools as a network. NSI was very helpful about five years ago now when Hillsides and Bienvenidos began a discussion moving toward an affiliation and a merger. Hillsides is a multi-service provider offering child welfare services and behavioral health services. We called upon NSI to provide us some support and through the grant that we received from NSI we were able to do the due diligence process and also beyond that an implementation phase. The Arts for Healing and Justice Network is a network of 13 member organizations that do direct arts programming with young people in the juvenile detention setting and also in community sites. We received a negotiation grant in 2015 to explore the possibility of formalizing a network structure. And then we also got an integration grant later that same year um, to bring in our consultant to really help us through that process. Over the years, we've learned a lot about strategic restructuring alongside our grantee partners. From grantee feedback and evaluation findings, we know that partnership models range far beyond the typical merger. They include a spectrum of outcomes, such as fiscal sponsorship agreements, parent subsidiary models, back office consolidations, shared staff, programming, space, and even the creation of networks among several organizations. We've also learned about the importance of third-party consultants to help facilitate the negotiation. We now know that it's oftentimes essential to the process. They bring due diligence expertise, rigor, and objectivity to the process. And we've learned through our grantee partners that regardless of the outcome, whether or not the negotiation ends in an agreement, they tell us that the exploration process itself is valuable for the organization. The process that we employed was pretty extensive, very thorough. It took a full year. It involved a pretty significant review of all of our contracts to make sure that they were compatible. I looked at all of the requirements and how this affiliation, this merger, would impact our ability to fulfill and satisfy those public contracts. There were a number of things that we looked at, employee relations, benefits, uh, how we might be able to create some equity between the workforce of both organizations. And in addition to that, there was the whole issue of some of the logistics of various sites and bringing those sites together and supporting people in addressing what it meant to come together. Just different cultures, different ways of operating. My background is in running schools, and while I am an entrepreneur, something the, along the lines of a merger is just not within my wheelhouse. And sometimes you need experts who really know um, how to guide you, how to push you in the right direction, and how to offer the services that you need to make things easier. We were able to look at assets and deficits and liabilities. We were able to look at alignment around board policies, we were able to look at the finances. Before um, receiving the support from NSI, we were convening the different organizations almost as a work group. And they were coming together to talk about their successes and their challenges in programming. And we really saw the opportunity of how do we really formalize that partnership so that the organizations at the time would have a space to share resources and also expertise. We were able to bring um, on board external consultants to really talk to each of our founding members to talk about the work that they did, 
um, their financials, what were some of the challenges they were encountering, what did they need from this network structure, what was missing. With that funding, with that support, we were able to really have a very clear guide or pathway of our role as a network and how can we support the network members um, in our capacity as a, as a collective. The short-term successes were pretty evident right away. There was a significant amount of savings because we were able to consolidate the administrative infrastructure. And those savings, which came to about a million dollars, then helped us to address some of the workforce equity issues that we needed to address. When we first started, we were just a staff of two, the executive director and myself. And now we are a staff of 10 full-time staff members and we have an annual budget of over a little bit over two million dollars so we have really grown in such a short span of time as this collective one of the things that we've learned through this process is that it was an opportunity for us to strengthen our mission and to provide greater impact and as a result we've established some criteria that allows an opening to be a lot more intentional and strategic about opportunities that there might be to affiliate and merge with other organizations. We're able to model effective collaborations and that's something that has enabled us to have a united voice to amplify how the arts are crucial to justice reform. By having this group of organizations, we've also been able to tap into funding that was inaccessible before, especially public funding. So smaller CBOs weren't able to contract with big departments like the probation department. So by having this network structure, we're actually able to funnel money from big departments into the smaller organizations um, serving almost as a pass-through mechanism for our members. I would highly, highly encourage organizations to look into NSI, to talk to organizations that have gone through the process. We would not have been able to execute this merger without the support of NSI. The recommended consultants are really, really excellent. So many supports. What we hope for is that every nonprofit leader will be able to see strategic restructuring and sustained collaboration as a tool in their nonprofit toolkit that they can draw upon at any time to ensure their sustainability and that the change that they want to see in the world can truly happen. I think in the nonprofit sector, there's this mentality of scarcity of resources, that there's not enough. So as we were bringing these organizations together, we really learned that we can do and we can achieve a lot more by working together. And if it weren't for that belief in that collaborative effort, we wouldn't have been able to achieve what we've achieved to this day.